So we need to spend a minute talking about convergence of the z-transform. The definition of the z-transform is the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity of x of k times z to the negative k. So anytime you see an infinite summation like this, one of the things you should keep in the back of your mind is that it might not necessarily turn into a number or a value or a function for all signals x of k, and there might be times where that summation blows up because you're actually summing up an infinite number of things. So we're interested in knowing what the conditions are for the sum actually to converge to something. And the condition is when the quantity x of k times z to the negative k is absolutely summable. If that quantity is absolutely summable, then the z transform does indeed converge or exist. So the infinite sum converges. So let's think about what does it mean for x of k times z to the negative k to be absolutely summable. So let's actually take the absolute value of x of k times z to the minus k. Well, remember what z the, is. It's just a complex number which we typically write in polar form. And we write z equals r e to the j omega. So if we replace z with r times e to the j omega, then z to the negative k is r to the negative k times e to the minus j omega k. So we've written this absolute quantity as this absolute quantity. And then e to the j anything, that's always something on the unit circle. So the magnitude of something on the unit circle is 1. So this simplifies to this. So if we need this quantity to be absolutely summable, that's the same as saying we need this quantity to be absolutely summable. So what we need is the sum from minus infinity to infinity of the absolute value of this quantity to be less than infinity. That's what it means to be absolutely summable. I take the absolute value and I sum over all values and that's less than infinity. It's a number. The values of R for which this happens is what we call the region of convergence. So you'll notice here that R is essentially a free variable that we have. If R was really small, say 0.01, as 0.01 was raised to larger and larger powers, you could see that x of k times this would decrease very quickly. So you'd think there'd be a very good chance of that signal converging as k got large. You might have to worry about k at negative times, um, but the values in general for which this converges, for which this is actually a number and not infinity, that's what we call the region of convergence. And we'll work some examples here in just a little bit, and we'll actually worry explicitly about what the region of convergence is for a z-transform. Let's look at just a simple example here, just to get a, a feel for what's going on with this quantity r and what we mean by convergence. Here is the signal x of k equals alpha to the k u of k. And I've actually chosen an alpha whose magnitude was greater than 1. So it was 0 for all negative time. And then at time 0, it turns on. And since alpha is greater than 1, as time goes on, this signal is kind of blowing up. As k gets larger and larger and larger, alpha to the k gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it should be clear, if we tried to absolutely sum this signal right here, we would end up with infinity, because as k gets larger and larger, this is getting larger and larger. So we're adding up an infinite number of values that are all getting larger and larger. So if we absolutely summed this signal, we would get infinity. However, in the definition of the z-transform, I don't actually, I'm not actually worried about just the signal being absolutely summable. I'm worried about the signal x of k times r to the negative k being absolutely summable. So here I'm plotting a quantity, r to the negative k, and I've chosen r as a value that is greater than alpha. So just to make things concrete, maybe up here I chose alpha as 1.2, and that's why it's blowing up. Here I would choose r equals 1.4. Well, typically 1.4 to the k would blow up as we went to the right, but this is r to the minus k. So 1.4 to the minus k actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller as k gets larger, and it blows up to the left. Okay, So that's what r to the negative k looks like. If I take the product of x of k times r to the minus k and plot that, what do I get? I get this bottom figure right here. This is just the product, element-wise product of this signal 
with this signal. Notice that x of k is actually equal to zero for negative time, so I'm taking zeros times this thing that's blowing up gives me zeros. For positive time, I have this signal that was blowing up, this signal that was decaying. The r to the minus k is actually decaying faster than alpha to the k is blowing up, so the net product is still something that is decaying. And the reason that's happening is because I chose an r that was larger than alpha. I actually made that choice very explicit when I chose the r for this plot. So here in this final plot, as k is getting larger, I'm still decaying. So this is very interesting. If I handed you this signal, x of k, and said compute the DTFT of that signal, you would tell me, sorry, you can't do that. This is not an absolutely summable signal, so the DTFT does not exist. However, when we work with the z-transform, we have this free variable r, and what we actually are worried about in terms of conversions of the z-transform is the product x of k times r to the minus k. For this example, the quantity x of k times r to the minus k is absolutely summable. I can take the absolute value of this and sum it over all time, and since this is decaying nicely, this will actually converge to a number, and my absolute sum actually converges to a number. So while the DTFT does not exist for this signal, for certain values of r, namely any r that's greater than alpha, the z-transform does exist, and I can actually compute the z-transform of this signal. So that is why we like the z-transform, why it's a more general transform type, because it can handle signals that the DTFT cannot handle.